Hey there, how you doing? What sort of work do you do? How would you describe your work? Is it meaningful? Is it sustainable? Maybe you would describe it in other ways. Maybe you feel trapped. Maybe you've lost your work. How would you describe your work? The lecture we're reading today is taken from John's Gospel, chapter 5, verses 17 to 30. And it follows on from yesterday's reading, which was Jesus uh, healing the man who had been a cripple uh, for 38 years. Uh, here, the authorities, the religious leaders are questioning Jesus because he healed that man on the Sabbath day, the traditional day of rest. We learn, it, we learn in the Bible that God uh, created uh, over a period of six days, and then on the seventh day, God rested. And there's all sorts of debates and discussions about uh, whether that's a, a day as we understand it or a longer uh, period of time, or whether the genre is more poetic and revealing more about the nature of God and people and our relationship to God. But I'm going to leave that to one side at the minute and just focus on this discussion between Jesus and the authorities. They're upset uh, that he uh, healed on the Sabbath. They see that as a kind of work and they say he shouldn't have been working on the Sabbath. Um, but that's a bit rough, don't you think? Because it, here's Jesus is healing this man who had been crippled for 38 years. Surely that is a good thing. Uh, but they had a downer on Jesus. And Jesus said to them, my father is still working and I also am working. That was his justification in response to them. But that made them even more upset because they felt that uh, Jesus was making himself equal to God by calling God his father. So they tried to kind of plot to kill him um, even more intently. But Jesus goes on to describe uh, to them uh, that uh, the, fa the father's job or the father's work is to raise the dead and bring life to those who are dead. And because Jesus is the Son of God, uh, that's his job as well. Uh, Jesus is the Son of God. Uh, his job also is to bring life to whoever wishes. So if we're thinking about what is God's job, that would be a pretty good description uh, that Jesus reveals job, uh, God's job uh, to raise the dead and to bring life to those who know him. There's been a whole bunch of discussions uh, about the COVID-19 pandemic and, and where is God in all of this? Uh, has he kind of left creation and, and gone off and uh, let us uh, do our own thing? Some have even said that uh, this is God's doing and God's hand is in this. Uh, but I have big reservations, uh, massive uh, questions about that uh, view, actually, because the Bible continues to tell the story of a God who brings life into being. And here Jesus says that in healing, uh, in raising people from the dead, which we'll see later in John's Gospel when we come to John chapter 11, uh, and the raising of his friend Lazarus uh, from the dead, that it is God's job to bring life to the world, to bring life out of death. That is God's job and God's responsibility. God alone has the power and the authority to do that. But we know when Jesus was risen from the dead, which we'll read later in John's Gospel in John chapter 20, uh, that is God's uh, action in raising Jesus uh, from the dead, but how do we understand Jesus' words here in this passage that the Son gives life to whoever he wishes? Or verse 24, Very truly I tell you, anyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and does not come under judgment, but has passed from death to life. He who believes in me does not come under judgment, but has passed from death to life. And I think here Jesus is describing uh, the whole of life um, uh, that exists without knowing Jesus as being um, somewhat marred, uh, somewhat uh, debased. And we know, don't we, through the pain and suffering in the world, 
um, the experiences, the bad experiences that we have in life, that there is, you know, quite a bit of truth uh, to this. Uh, we might kind of react uh, to the way Jesus is describing it as quite harsh. But actually, when we look around, all is not well. And I think that's what Jesus is refer referring to here. Even though we have life, even though we live and breathe, uh, there is a dark side to that. And Jesus is describing that as us living in a state of death. Uh, but the Bible reveals that God loves us so much that he doesn't want us to stay in that state of death. He wants us to know him and to experience life and life in all its fullness and indeed life for all of eternity. So I think here Jesus is describing life here and now in the present, uh, where you are. Uh, friends, do you know Jesus? Do you know God? And do you know the work that he longs to do in the world? And that is to bring all people from this state of death and a future of death uh, to a future and a presence of life. Uh, a life of knowing Jesus now and for all of eternity. So when we think about what is happening in the world, I think it's wrong to uh, say that God is bringing death to the world because here in this passage, Jesus reminds us that it is God's job uh, to bring life out of death. Uh, so that is what God longs to do. God longs to bring life out of death. Verse 24, I'll finish uh, with for you today. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and does not come under judgment, but has passed from death to life. Friends, if you're listening to this and you don't know Jesus today, may you know that he longs to be with you. He longs to meet with you and his words have power. His words are true and he longs to bring you from a future of death. Uh, to a future uh, of life, uh, a life for all eternity that you can possess and you can experience right now through knowing him, through hearing God's word and responding to him who longs to bring people into a fullness of life. Friends, may that encourage uh, you today uh, as you go about your daily work. Uh, may you know that God is a God who longs to bring life out of death. Take care and we'll see you again tomorrow.